People have been down at the trustee sale auction. Quick show of hands. You've been down there on 4th Street. You've been out in the parking lot. Hopefully it was a little cooler, not in July or something. Because it's out in the parking lot underneath a little covered uh, metal. And I hate to interrupt you. What was the code again so that we can... No worries. Yeah. Um, the, for the login, if you use the WJB guest login, and then the password is WJB guest for the password. So that should get you in. Because there will be some websites that you can get on. Um, Rapid Trustee Sale, obviously, you can get on that real quick. Um, the focus today is kind of explain the trustee sale process. A lot of people might have heard of it or even been down there but not understand it. And it, it can be intimidating if you're the newbie. Um, the background for me, um, I worked with a company. We had a investor group out of Salt Lake City, Utah. In 2011, we purchased and flipped 32 properties. So I was down there raising my hand, bidding, being frustrated when someone would outbid me because my cap was at a certain level. Um, and then you go back the next day and you hope to get another property. So it, it's probably the best show in town, bar none. I don't care if you go to the, the big ones on the strip. This one is a circus. There are clowns down there. Uh, there's no elephants or anything like that, but it is entertainment at its finest, especially on Fridays. And we'll, we'll get into that. But trustee sale auction, these happen every day in every county around, around the country. Now, Las Vegas is kind of unique. If you thought it was at the courthouse, you'd be incorrect. The reason it's not at the courthouse is about 12 to 15 years ago, um, there was a push to move it away from the courthouse because you know how Clark County is. There's a lot of activity down at the courthouse. And actually, Metro was a big proponent of moving it. So um, the Battle Legal News, there's, there was an assembly bill. It was paid, uh, passed through 40, 40 yes, zero no's. Um, that allowed Washoe County and Clark County to move it to a third place. So that's why it's located at Nevada Legal News. So um, it's actually a lot better. There's not a lot, lot of uh, distraction and looking loose uh, to get in. But um, the second announcement I had for you is don't worry about the presentation. You'll get a copy of it. I'll send it to you. You'll have all the information uh, in a PDF form. You can email me if you need any handouts or anything that I missed. But I'll get you everything, basically kind of a packet, trustee sale packet for you. So rather than having you have a lot, you know, you have enough paper in front of you. So, um, Real estate auction, it, it is an innovative and effective way of buying real estate. The best thing about the trustee sale auction is it's immediacy. You win the auction, you win the property, you can go to the property, you can start right away. There's some variables that you got to take into advantage, but... There's no waiting for a closing, there's no delays. It's pay for it, get the receipt, go to the profit. So that's, that's probably one of the nice things about a real estate auction, is the immediacy. You know right away you have the profit. All right, there's three phases that I'm gonna go through in this presentation. The first one is just some background information. I know a lot of you are in real estate, you might have some understanding of the terms and everything, but I'm gonna assume this is the first time you've ever seen trustee sales. So, whoops. Um, we're going to talk about how to analyze the deals as an investor and as an agent. You'll be working with clients and they might want to buy property, but they don't want to do any of the work. I mean, that's why they make all the money. Um, so you're going to have to understand what their needs are so you can cater to them. All right? The best thing for an investor, and I'll go through these real quick, because they're in the presentation, but there's a couple I want to highlight. Um, the one, purchasing and closing dates are known. Uh, investors hate the idea that they have to wait. How many of you have dealt with short sales? Sure. Oh, yes. They're not going to go away. They'll be here forever. They've been here forever. They'll be here tomorrow. But it's, it can be very frustrating. You can go in, be a year, you know, the investors actually forgot about they put in an offer and put in escrow money. Mm -hmm. you know, and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, they call you up. Hey, how's my deal coming? Well, you know, the bank is still you know, doing their dance. So they like, they like auctions for that. The other one is the, the long negotiation periods. There's no highest and best. There's no amendments. There's no, oh, per this inspection, we got to change this. No, it's within five minutes, there's going to be a sale. 
Um, as soon as that opening bid comes up, everybody starts bidding, the highest bid wins, and we're done. They move on to the next one. Okay? So that's, that's some of the benefits to the investor. Now, as an agent, there are, there are benefits for you, too. And I'll put them up on the board real quick. The biggest one that I like is auction results and referrals. Investors talk to investors. There's all kinds of social medias for investors to get on, go into different parts of the country. Vegas has been hot for a long time. Right now, we're kind of in a pinch. You guys know that. The inventory is not there. Um, just to look at kind of the process, notice the defaults are an indication of what's going to come through the foreclosure process and to auction. In September alone, there were 3,800 notice of defaults. So if you're looking at 90 to 120 days, those are going to start hitting that first quarter. So investors are looking for that. And as an agent, you can pitch that and say, there's an opportunity, and it's going to be a small window in the first quarter of 2014, because there's going to be a lot of inventory available. Okay? And I'll kind of explain later on why that came about. Also, um, you can develop your own niche market. You can go down there, hand out business cards. It's a public auction. So everybody down there is free game. Um, I see agents down all, all the time handing out cards. Um, it's, a, it's a nice way to get your brand out there. A lot of them are established. I call them the fraternity because they're there every day, day in and day out. But you, there's always new buyers down there. All right. Oh, real quick, go through the uh, process. The essential to bidding and then how to how to really target what are good properties. Um, there's 4th Street, Battle Legal News. So if you think it's a grand place, that's where everybody sits. Bring a chair. That's the number one thing I will tell you. Bring a chair and bring water. I don't care if it's 4 degrees or 104 degrees. Bring some water. Because if you're going to sit there for an hour, two hours, six hours, um, they don't stop usually. They might, well, take a lunch break, but bring some water. But um, in January, it's cold. In July, it's hot. So that's all I can tell you about the facilities. Um, three terms, trustee sale, trustee, and beneficiary. Um, the beneficiary is handling the trustee. And you're going to hear terms like recon trust, priority and publishing, um, I think some of the others, uh, LPS. Uh, you can go to those sites. Uh, they have websites. You can get the information directly for yourself. Now, to, to go and find that information directly from the beneficiary, it's a 24-7 job because properties get postponed, properties get canceled, um, a lot of information gets changed, and it's too much work for you. Your time is valuable as it is. Uh, the trustee, um, they'll manage the assets for the beneficiary, and then obviously the trustee sales a public auction house that has the, uh, the sale itself. So three different terms uh, in case you haven't, haven't come across that before. Um, takes place every day, Monday through Friday at 10 o'clock. Okay? Except for holidays. So Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, you know, the major holidays, they will close for that. Um, but 10 a.m. Um, Fridays are unique because auction.com comes into town on Fridays and they start at 9 o'clock. So there's actually two entities that will be uh, doing auctions. So there's some background for you. All right, where do these properties come from? First one is the origination of the properties, NODs. You can see the process there. Uh, homeowner goes into delinquency. They have a time period where they can try to do a loan, loan modification. There's a notice of default issued. There's mediation in, in other states. Um, we have trustee sales back east. If you're from back east, you might hear it as a sheriff sale. Uh, that's another term. So, or a judicial state might go through a judicial process. Um, once that mediation ends, or the notice of default, there will be a notice of 21 days, and you'll see that on the property. Big paint letters, big uh, notice right on the front door that we've seen so frequent throughout the Las Vegas Valley. And then after that 21 days, there'll be a uh, scheduled trustee sale. So that's where the properties come from. It basically, you know, a homeowner falls behind and they don't re recover either through a loan mod or uh, mediation. All right, now Nevada, 
gets a little more streamlined. Notice the default, there's a reinstatement, redemption, publication, the sale, and then eviction if they're unwilling to leave. So, again, you'll get all this, so you'll have this in a nice little packet. All right, there's an example of the trustee sale that gets posted on the front door. Um, like I said, you can't miss it, big blue tape. Um, usually they take it down very quickly because they're embarrassed, they don't want the neighbors to know. But, you know, I don't know why they're embarrassed. A lot of people have them. All right, volume of properties. Right now, um, we're a little lower than these stats. These were a couple months ago. 180 to 90, or 200 properties a day. 10 to 20 only get sold to a third property with 180 to 190 get postponed or canceled. Okay. Today I looked, um, there were about 33 scheduled. Um, six of them had opening bids. So it's gonna be a very light day today. And Tuesday, Thursdays are usually pretty light. The big day is Friday, um, because auction.com comes in with their, their list also. Um, Wednesdays are heavy, but it's kind of a, a sneaky number because <coughs> it's HOA liens that are being auctioned on Wednesdays. So, but we'll get into that. So, volume of properties. Um, when we see the market really <coughs> shift, when we start seeing 400 a day, that's when the market's really hot for inventory. That's kind of the, the historic number. If you see a uh, daily schedule of 400 plus, then it's, you need to be down there for sure because there's a lot of opportunity. All right, qualifying in, how do we pay for it? When you go down to the auction, you're gonna have to qualify. And that means two things, have a valid ID. A lot of people you know, will go down there, they'll, they'll forget their wallet or forget their and without a valid ID, you can't buy. So that's the first thing. Make sure you have a driver's license or state ID. The other one is have your cashier's checks. Um, they will take cash up to a certain amount at Nevada Legal News, up to $2,500. Um, but it's cashier's checks, and it's paid in full. So you gotta have the entire amount. Different states work a little different. Down in Phoenix, um, you pay 10% of the winning bid, and then 24 hours later, you pay the difference. So it works a little different depending on where you're at. So down at uh, the Battle League of News, paid in full, cashier's checks. Here's the other advice I will give you. Don't go down there with one big check. You know, if you go down there with $200,000 in one check and you win the bid at $87,000, you got a lot of equity tied up. And it can take up to 30 days to get that refund from the trustee. So have denominations of 50, 20, 10, 5, all the way down to $1,000 increments. When you win the bid, you'll sign over the cashier's checks to Nevada Legal News and they'll process it to the trustee. So, um, If you are bidding for yourself, the cashier's checks are made out to yourself and then you just sign them over. Or if you're bidding for, say, an LLC, you're going to need what's called a power of attorney and it's a one-page sheet from Nevada Legal News that basically says, I can bid and I can sign checks. That's it. So, but it. And just one real quick thing. On Fridays, Brett did mention that auction.com is there, that you need to qualify in both places. You have to qualify with your funds if, on Fridays. Yeah, so you'll see auction.com down there. They'll have, you can't miss them, they're all in the green shirts. They'll have a big uh, uh, temporary tent. They'll be all over. So. If you're bidding on theirs and Nevada Legal News list, you have to qualify for both. So that's a good point. All right, postponements. There's a number of reasons why a trustee sale won't happen. Um, the biggest one is because of a bankruptcy. Um, right before, you know, even the day of, the morning of, the attorney will go down there, file an injunction saying, hey, we got a bankruptcy on the books, everything stops. So. Um, there will be bankruptcy postponements even five minutes to ten before they start. So that's the number one reason. And, you know, usually if you know anything about homeowners, they'll wait till the last minute in hopes that a mediation loan modification or something will, you know, kind of bail them out and bankruptcy is their last resort. Uh, mutual agreement. A lot of times the homeowners are working on a short sale or a mediation and they'll tell the beneficiary, hey, we have a buyer, we're waiting on the bank, they need the HUD, we're two days away, can you give me 30 days? And they'll postpone it, see if it, if it works out. 
Trustee's discretion, this one I laugh at, that just means they don't have their ducks in a row. Usually there's some paperwork or, or something in the file that's incomplete. And if you remember back in the news a little while ago with robo-signing everything, now it's you know a felony if you start messing with people's housing. So they're real careful of that. So they'll postpone it a lot of times just to make sure the file's complete. And then beneficiary request. The bank says, oh, I think we'll just take off the next you know 30 days to the end of the year and we won't do anything. So we'll just keep postponing it. No, I'm being facetious. But, <laughs> but the, the, you know they have their reasons for their postponement too. So you can see there's a many different uh, variables that can affect the um, the sale cell. All right. Um, when I pull up the site, you're going to see um, an estimated bid and the actual bid. The estimated bid is found on the notice of sale, and that basically is saying what is owed on the note. So, you know, an homeowner paid it off for so long, and then fees started adding up. The estimated bid is what the bank would say today. I'm going to I'm going to break even. Does that make sense? All right, that's my bet. Total debt owed to the beneficiary, of course, you know, the bank's going to make money every time. So they got attorney fees, they got filing fees, they got all these legal fees, they got all these things lumped in. So they'll add that in. So you take that plus their extra fees, and that gets you your overall estimated bid. Okay? Now that estimated bid can vary. It can be the same as amount that is owed, it can be more, or it can be significantly less. And that's the ones you're looking for. All right, opening bids. This is the final indicator if a trust, trustee sale is going to happen. So you're going to want to look for properties that have an opening bid because basically the beneficiary has done everything they can do. The trustee is all set with their paperwork. And when at 10 o'clock or any time thereafter there's an opening bid, it can come up. Now, here's the frustrating thing about Nevada Legal News. When you go down there, you're going to be there at 10 o'clock and say there's a list of 60 properties and you want to look for one of them. You don't know when it's going to come up. So at 10 o'clock, you could be waiting. At 4 o'clock, you could be waiting. You just don't know because they release it when the trustee, or excuse me, the, uh, yeah, the trustee releases it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the trustee could be, you know, out to lunch until 3 and then come back and say, oh, yeah, we got to release this one. So I've waited till 4.45. There was another gentleman and I were the only ones there waiting. They came out. She came up to the little podium just like this and said, you know, ABC address has been postponed till, and, and we just wasted a whole day. It was, you know, it's the most frustrating thing, but that's the nature of the business. Sometimes you get there and, you know, 10 o'clock, the property comes up, it's the first one. So it's, it's hit or miss usually. Now auction.com does it a little differently. They're kind of a little more streamlined. They have everything in order, and they try to stick to that order as much as they can. So you'll have the list of properties, and sometimes they might have to bounce around a little bit, but they'll try to stay in order as much as possible. All right, drop bids. Oh, I, did I miss anything here? Uh, estimated bid. Opening bids are pretty self-explanatory. It's, it's basically the reserve of where the beneficiary is going to start the bidding. So it could be as low as $15,000, could start at $1.5 million. Um, there's some commercial properties. If, if you're into commercial or have that license, there's a lot of opportunity down there also. So It's always fun to see all the suits come down when it's you know a $7 million strip property. You know, they're all standing there, you know, in July sweating. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. At any time. You, you mentioned the, the commercial license. What, what are you talking about? They do have uh, properties that go to auction mm -hmm. that are commercial properties. Right. Yep. Vacant land, strip properties, right. uh, business buildings. Um, they do come up. But um, do we need a special license? license? Uh, to buy it? Yeah. No. You don't need it? No. And, let, let me rephrase that. Um, you don't need to be a real estate agent. You don't need a special license to purchase property at the auction. Okay? It, it's the most pure form of acquiring property. You go down there, anybody, if you got the money, you win the property. So, yes? Um, earlier you had said something about Wednesdays. They are normally doing HOA. Right. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Are, are you getting a deed for that property 
Okay. I'll go in through a whole that? section of that okay, in just perfect. a little bit. Yeah. Okay. That's a whole <laughs> different <Yeah>. mess. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll call that. My first advice is avoid it as much as possible. Don't do it. But there are a lot of people that are taking advantage of that. All right. Drop bids. This is the one I love. Um, drop bids will be um, anything less than the, the uh, amount of the note. So, and a lot of times they'll drop the bid five minutes before the auction. Um, anybody done BPOs in the past? Yeah, you've done them. You've, you've done your uh, comps. And you know any time between you know, day one and day 90, it can swing dramatically in this town. So a lot of times the banks will have a BPO evaluation on a property, and it's three months old. So you know a week before the auction, or the day before, they get a new evaluation, and they go, whoa, our property is much less. You know, so our, as, you know, our opening bid is too high. We'll drop it by 10, 15, 20%. And that's great, because you've already done your research and done all your calculations based on this number, and if they drop it, all that's margin of income. That's great. So uh, drop bids are what I think is an advantage to buying at the auction. So. All right. Uh, winning the bid is trustee receipt. I mentioned earlier that once you win it, it's yours, which is great. However, it's also all the problems that go with the property are yours also. So um, when you win the bid, they'll come right over to you. So and. If you ever get down there, go down there on the Friday for the first time. If you've never seen it, go down to um, the sale and see auction.com. It's a show. They literally put on a show. They will they'll kind of milk the bid a little bit. Nevada Legal News is, I call her the librarian. You don't speak, she speaks. You know, you might say a bid and she's straight and narrow. Her name's Debbie. She's a wonderful lady. But she's, you know, she wants to get out of there. You know, she's got a cry off I mean, maybe 150, 200 properties. So um, she'll keep you on pace. So, you know, going once, going twice, sold. So if you're not paying attention, you might miss out. But uh, once you win it, um, you go and sign the cashier's checks, they'll come over to you, and you start signing out the checks. So say it's $107,000, so you got 50, 20, 20, 10, and another 10. You sign them off, you hand them the check. They're also gonna ask for a vesting slip. And they're right on Nevada Legal's new site, and it's in the packet. Um, you just basically put all the detailed information of how you want the property to be recorded and, and how, what the receipt says. If it's an LLC, you'll put it on there. If it's yourself, you put your name, um, things like that. And then they'll give you a receipt. You'll actually get a long receipt, big yellow slip about this long. And that's your proof to the state, uh, the constable, uh, anybody else, the owner, that you own the property. So you can start doing repairs immediately. Change the locks, get your repairs going, um, do your trash out, whatever it is. Now, once you get that receipt, if it's still occupied, then you deal with that headache. And we'll, we'll talk about that in just a minute. All right. There's the, the green group, I call them, uh, the auction.com, and Debbie's at the podium. Um, Nevada Legal News is the host, so they have to have a representative out there at all times, even when auction.com is, is doing their list. Now, they start at 9 o'clock, they never start on time. It's usually about 9.20ish. Uh, and that runs them straight up to 10 o'clock, well then Nevada Legal News kicks in at 10 o'clock. So then they kind of take t turns, bouncing back and forth. So um, you need to kind of pay attention of who's doing the crying and what list you're looking at. Um, I'll give you a site where you get all the information all in one. How's that? Who, who are these people from auction.com? Are they flying in? They're coming they in from California. It's their, their home base. They actually um, they do four days in Maricopa. One day in Clark is usually this crew. So they're down in Phoenix, usually four days, Monday through Thursday. But uh, the, this guy in the hat, um, he does... Texas on Monday, Maricopa on Tuesday, Wednesday. He goes to San Diego Thursday, and then Clark County on Friday. They're just selling for the banks. Yeah. Well, auction.com. You've seen them. Um, you can actually bid online. Uh, it's a company out of California, Tungsten, Tungsten, California. Yeah, they're taking about thirty billion dollars of local real estate agents. Yep. 
business. Yeah, we, we can get a whole debate on that. <laughs> um, Debbie, um, she's usually there. Um, there's usually another gentleman with a beer. Um, but uh, they have two people working. Auction.com has about 20. So, and they do about the same amount of business. So I think it's kind of interesting. And you can see people just kind of center around, try to hear them. Um, we'll get into the essentials. Obviously, it's an easy flip. All right. Um, two things you have to decide um, on the cash investors. And this is particular for you. This is the first conversation you have with your uh, investor. Are you going to flip the property or are you going to rent it out? There's two different strategies for that. You know, there are properties that are really good rentals in town, and there's better ones that are to flip. And, you know, you go through the neighborhoods. I don't have to tell you that. But uh, that's the first, really first conversation that you want to have with them. Um, flip, obviously, you're looking at the short term, less than 60 days, hopefully under 30. If you can do it in a week as, as is, that's even better. You know, if you catch it right, you don't have to do any work to it at all. Someone else will come in and say, wow, we missed this at the auction and you raised it up 10, 15,000. We'll buy it and we'll do all the repairs. You get in out quick. Rentals, obviously, uh, a lot of you might have a property management team or license yourself. You can do it all, all in-house. So. Um, the, the company I worked for, we did, everything was flipped. There was no discussion. Um, back in oh, 2011, their margin was 15 to 18% return. So it shifted a little bit. Now they're, you know, if they get close to 10%, I think they're doing pretty well. So market has definitely shifted in the last couple of years. The power of attorney. Um, that basically states that you can do the bidding for the LLC or incorporation. Um, it's Nevada Legal News has a one-page sheet. It's really simple. The representative from the LLC, usually the president or whatever, they sign it, you sign it, you get it notarized, and then you just keep copies for when you win the bid of the property, you just hand it to Nevada Legal News. So basically it can say, you know, these three things, what you can do. You can raise your hand, do the bidding, you can sign the cashier's checks, and you can sign the best thing. That's all you can do with it. Uh, people ask all the time, you know, why, why didn't people rob this place? I mean, there's a lot of money down here. Well, it's all in cashier's checks, and it's already made out to someone. So they can't go anywhere with this. But at any given point in time, there's probably, I don't know, five, ten, maybe $15 million sitting, you know, in flip-flops and shorts and, you know, sweating to the oldies. Uh, power of attorney, like I said, it's a one-page sheet. It looks like that, and I'll send I'll send that to you. Does it have to be original, or can you copy it? Okay, you can make copies of it. Yeah. So if you get it notarized once and you just make copies, they'll take that. They used to keep it on file, and then uh, it got too cumbersome for them, so they just put it back on the buyer, saying, "Give us a copy when you win the bid." So. And they're only good for six months. After six months, they have to have another original. Yeah, that, that gets into another screwy timeline thing with Nevada Legal News. Your cashier's checks will only be valid for 90 days. Usually cashier's checks are, what, 7 to 10 years or something, depending on the bank or institution. It's a long time, but they'll only accept it for 90 days. So you got to kind of pay attention on your cashier's checks. If you haven't used them, just trade them back in. All right. Fee and agreement. This is where the agents get excited. Um, this is... Uh, as I mentioned, when you buy the property, you know, it's immediate. So there is no commission uh, based on that. So you're going to have to work that out with the investor. Now, obviously, check with your broker because you're still under the umbrella of their sales. But you can negotiate any percentage, any terms, any way you want to factor it. As long as you can get the investor to agree to it, it's fair game. So, um, you know, there's... One buyer down there will do 10% right off the top. You know, whatever, whatever it's sold for, I get 10% of that. You know, that's a flat fee, 10%. Well, you know, it's good for him. There's another company that will do 1%, but they take it from buying, flipping, doing all the repairs, and then the close also. So they're getting... 1% of the back. Yeah, they're getting 1%. And there's all kinds of deals in between there. 
So um, I know of one gentleman that would just raise his hand and do that, that transition for $500. That's all he wanted was $500. But he's down there every day, and he'll raise your hand and raise his hand and, and do that transaction for you. So basically, it's whatever you can negotiate, and then always get it approved with your broker because he or she is involved there too. All right. Opening bid and software. Uh, trustees, um, they'll get all these properties, you know, through foreclosure, many different ways. But then they have to publish it. Now, some will publish it on a website, some won't, depending on the size of their company. Um, title companies have properties that they take back, credit unions, attorneys end up with them sometimes, um, but mostly are the big banks, Bank of America, uh, Wells Fargo, Chase, you know, things like that. Um, Bank of America's trustee is Recon Trust. Uh, Chase and Wells Fargo uses Trustee Corps. Okay. Auction.com handles Trustee Corps pretty pretty exclusively. So, And they'll come up with the opening bids. So you can go online to the trustee site and find all this information. But I'll make it easy for you. Okay. Opening bid and trustee software. So. There's a lot of trustee sites, okay? free, but there's a lot of them. Nevada Legal News, you can subscribe to their site, and they have all the information for Clark County. I can tell you right now, it's $150 a month for, for their, uh, their subscription. And it's great. It's a great site. Pretty user-friendly. You can export it to Excel. Um, can do a search for individual APN. I mean, they're hosting the site, so you know, they have a good site. Auction.com, it's free. Um, I mentioned they only show up on Fridays, so that does you no good Monday through Thursday. But if you're only looking for Fridays, they're good. They also do online bidding. They do have fees for that, so be careful on that. 702buy.com, it's a local company here. Um, they have their own software. How they started was they would have investors and they had this internal software that only their investors could access. Now they've come out with a free version and subscription, depending on how many bells and whistles that you want. Um, I know the guys, Jesus is a great guy. Bid against him for a whole year. Um, Las Vegas Default, that's the Cadillac of the town. Um, Anthony Martin, I don't know if you know him. Uh, he has that company. Um, I call this a boutique software. He'll literally build it for you what you want, what you don't want. He's got a bunch of options. You can say, I want this, I want that. Um, it's a little more on the, when I said Cadillac, it's on the higher end. Um, the last time I saw it, it was about 3000 to start up, and then there's about a couple hundred dollars a month to maintain it. But it includes everything, everything that you could want. Property radar, which was the old foreclosure radar. Um, again, there's a subscription rate, about $49 a month. Um, it's pretty good. It's not as good as it used to be, though. Uh, Griffin Group, um, they're right down there. Their office is right down there. They have their own bidding system. Um, they will do that for you. Um, or if you have an investor and you don't want any part of that, but you can refer them to the Griffin Group, they'll handle it and give you a referral feedback. Um, in full closure, they're out of Phoenix. Um, they just came up to Vegas about nine months ago. Um, they have a great system too. They're in Maricopa County, Clark County, and LA County. So, anybody have dual uh, licensing? Arizona or California? Everybody's in Nevada. Are oh, you get dual? No. Okay. So, um, you might have investors that are looking in different areas also. And then, Rapid Trustee Sales is our company. Uh, the best part is it's free. So, we'll probably pitch that at the end. <laughs> All right, how do you how do you get your target? Um, this is my wife and I. We didn't have a clue on our first house. <laughs> Title research. This is where I'm going to take a break for a second. I'm going to turn it over to Linda because um, she's the expert. One thing that you'll know about Tycor is um, they have a portion in our website that provides all the uh, lien information. So there's two numbers you're going to want while you're down there. One is the opening bid because you need to know where to start. The other one is, are there any liens? Because that's going to kill a deal. Um, IRS liens, HOA liens, 
Um, there's, you know, there's different variety of, of liens that can really make a good deal go bad very quickly. And nothing against Tycor. There's other companies down there. You know, again, like like uh, John said, you know, they're all providing a service. It's it, it's all about the relationship. Um, I can't say enough about Linda because you know we've had a great working relationship for going on two plus years now. So uh, I'll invite her up real quick, and she'll talk about the titles and the liens. Me again. Okay. Okay. Uh, first quick question: How many of you have actually been to the auctions? Um, successful bidders. Wonderful. That's good. That's good news. Um, as mentioned, as Brett said, that our information is on Rapid Trustee Sales site. Our lien information is on Rapid Trustee Sales site, and it's free. We are the only title company in town that provides this list in Excel format. Everybody else is in PDF, and it's free. We'd love the opportunity to earn your business, and we want to help you be successful, especially in this process. So my question is, is when you buy at the auction, does that mean the property is free and clear? No. Very good. That is the biggest mistake that a lot of people make. They, they feel that you buy something at the auction and it wipes out all leads. And that is so far from the truth. So what this report does is we put it out daily. You'll get it between <coughs> 4 and 5. It gets uploaded to the site every day. And we are going to help you uh, realize what liens that affect your property. Brett spoke of some great advantages of purchasing at the auction. Your instant ownership, you have, you could have instant equity, or maybe even a return on your investment if your um, investor is holding it, you know, to have rental income. That's great, but there are huge risks when buying at the auction, and if you do not do your homework, then you're gonna, you can take a huge loss. And I will tell one story in, uh, in a minute. But this list is the PDF version which I provided to you on your, on your desk, and I'm just going to cover just a couple of things. You, uh, there are a couple of terms. Um, when you go into the top, you'll see it lists the property, the parcel number, the trustee sale number, but there's a column there that says published bid. That is not the opening bid. That is the amount that the bank is owed from the note, their um, fees and uh, penalties and accruing interest. That's what really the bank is owed. So do not look at that for your opening bid, but we put it on there because that's what is published on the Notice of Trustee Sale. What you want to look for is if you're buying a first deed of trust. All subordinate liens would get wiped out by a sale except for those super priority liens. So if there is an HOA, trash, back taxes, <coughs> SIDS, LIDS, sewer, you are responsible for all of those liens. If there is an IRS lien on the property, you are still responsible for that as well. However, if you wait 120 days to flip that property, that 120 days, the 121st day, the lien falls off. The IRS has 120 days to redeem that property from you. In the event that they do redeem that property and call you and say, we want that property, you have a choice. Either pay the IRS lien or say, here, take the property. You can have the property. They will pay you for the purchase of that property. However, if you have done rehab, um, cash for keys, have paid off any of those liens, they will not reimburse you for that. So be careful when purchasing a property with an IRS lien. Our report is going to show that. So on this report, there are a couple items. And that, as you can see, we have IRS lien Karen Brown. That's a very common name. Without a social security number, we're unable to do the proper research to see if that's an exact fit. This is not an IRS lien, it's a, it's a general lien, not a specific lien. So it's going to attach to everything and anything that, that they own. So if it's unclear, um, you can call us and we'll, we can do a little bit more research, but because there are hundreds of properties that go daily, um, the timeliness and the time that it takes to do that extensive research on these properties, um, we're not going to do unless we know that you're very interested in purchasing this property. So one of the risks, if you go down on the bottom or middle of the page, it says that it's a second. So if you purchase that property at the auction for the, uh, it's like 242,000 was the estimated bid. Kind of looks like a first, but if it was a second. You would be responsible for that first lien. It's yours. And like we talked about, anything that's super priority or anything that's senior of the lien that's foreclosing, it's your responsibility. So in the lien column, it'll say. You'll see on the second row it says trash, 
That's what's a public record. So you need to know um, when that recorded, because those also can have um, interest in um, penalties that accrue. So you have trash um, and sewer on that one. But a good one right below that says NOL, which says no other liens. That would be something you'd look at and say, you know what, that's probably a really good property. Wait and see if that opening bid um, is low enough to take advantage of that uh, property for your client. And another thing to also do to minimize your risks is to um, not only look at the liens, but to make sure that, that you view the property. You want to make sure that the property is there. You want to make sure that the air conditioning is there. If you can see through the windows and make sure cabinets and everything is there. Because if not, again, you're going to be responsible for that. Also to see if there's tenants in there, because that's also going to add to your bottom margin. Uh, another good one on the bottom is your HOA. Those are those liens that we know are never true to what's on the value. Uh, all of you are most insurer agents. You have a lien, what's, uh, what's, uh, what is stated of uh, public record is never the true amount. They're going to tack on their reasonable fees. Well, they're unreasonable fees, but um, yeah. So again, you want to take a look at that and try to add a pad for any of these liens that are recorded. On HOAs, what if uh, they've not recorded the total amount due? then you have to deal, still take that into a consideration, which is a great, great question, because just because there aren't a, a, a recorded lien, a public record, doesn't mean that the, that the homeowner is not paying. So there could be some back taxes, well, taxes would show that um, trash and sewer and HOA, that has not been a public record, but take an account for that as well. Did you have a question, David? Yeah, Linda, I do. Um, do you have any way of keeping the HOA honest? Because I know the half a dozen properties that I purchased, every single one of them, oh, no, no, they owe us a year's back, back um, and how do you prove it? You have no communication with the previous owner, okay? Now, well, most of them might negotiate the set-offs, but still. A thing to look at, I mean, the, the, the super priority is nine months, okay? And I'm sure if you guys all know that it's a nine-month super priority. I mean, and Joe, feel free to uh, come on whenever you, whenever you want. Um, so they are allowed to collect the nine months. But if they're, they're, if you look at that ledger, you could probably negotiate because um, if they've added um, trustees fees or TSGs or uh, violations, some of those things never took place that you might want to look at and say, wait a minute, this, there was never a notice of default. Why are you charging me TSG and foreclosure fees? So because a lot of those fees are standard, you might want to just kind of look at the ledger. But I have seen HOA um, get negotiated. Absolutely. A lot of them are negotiated. Yeah. So it's not, you know, they want their money. And again, as Brett said too, the laws are changing with these HOAs, so we're going to see a lot of things happen here soon with the, with the HOA purchases at the auction. There's another one I really want to talk about too, and feel free to call me at any time. Um, I'm not going to take a whole lot more of your time because we need to finish this up. But um, if you have a property that you are really interested in and you're not sure and somebody else's list says something, <coughs> mine says it's a first and they're saying it's a second and I'm saying that there's no liens and someone else is saying something else, you call me or email me and I will let you know what our position is to insure that property. And we will put that in writing for you. One of the biggest ones that a lot of people stay away from and, and the other title companies, if you go to page two, it says prior unreleased deed of trust, it's in red. Your high risk properties are going to be in red. The information. That prior unreleased deed of trust is just a, a loan that the, the trustee has not released a public record that that loan was paid off. So does that mean really it's, um, uh, is that a second because it's not been publicly released? No. So if you look at our list, it says that it's a first, but if you're not sure and you want to know our insurability on that, you send me an email or call me and say, Linda, what is Tycor's position on the insurability of this property. This is the, one of the biggest deterrents that a lot of these investors or realtors stay away from because the uncertainty if that has been paid off. When really, it's a, just a reconveyance that has been delayed. It's a process. When it gets paid off, the trustee files the, the recon and sometimes it makes it a public record and sometimes it doesn't. So again, if it's something that you're very interested in, just let me know. Joe, did you want to add anything before I step down? I just wanted to add, Thai Court Title is here to help you. Um, if you have a problem on an escrow and it's with another another title company and you're not, you're not getting the answers that you want, feel free to call me and Linda. We'd be happy to help you and to earn your business. Just one last thing, and we do appreciate the opportunity to work with, with you and your investors, and therefore Tycor 
has filed an investor rate, which will give your clients 30% off their title and their escrow fee. And how they qualify for that as an investor is that they have to purchase three properties or more within a 12-month period. And we will give that 30% discount, which can save them a lot of money. We do not charge huge ancillary fees. It's title, escrow, and uh, that's it. We don't charge water fees. We don't charge courier fees. We don't, we don't charge. So with that, we'd love the opportunity to earn your business. How many of you are working with Tycor now? Oh, well, that's awesome. Yay, thank you so much. But we'd love to work with you, um, not only on your trustee sale, but again, Tycor provides many programs and services to help you with your business and increase your sales. So please feel free to call me at any time. My information is all over the material. Um, if, uh, later tonight, I will send you an overview of what happens at the auction and the process of the trustee sale on a one-page note. Okay? Well, we'll bring Brad, Brad back up. Thanks. I can't say enough about Linda, but I, I will say one short That's thing insane. is um, make sure, whoever you're using, make sure you have a relationship with that title person. Because what's going to happen is there's going to be a property that pop, pops up and you're not going to have all the information. And you're at sweating bullets time where you have to find out, is there a lien? You know, is it clear? Is it a first? What not? If you can call that person, then they'll take your phone call immediately and get on the horn and, and find out that information. It can be, you know, a two hundred thousand dollar deal, and that's where that relationship comes in. So, you know, Linda's great, Joe's great. You know, they'll find out all the information for you. So, but, but my advice to all, everybody in the room is get that relationship with that title person, so they'll take your call because time is of the essence down there at the auction. Um, she went through the first deed of trust, and this is kind of all recapping that she just got done. So I'll go into the field research. There's a gray area about, well, can I go to the property and see what's in it? Well, yes, you can, up to a point. Once you step on the property, um, by the letter of the law, it's trespassing, because you don't have permission to go onto the property, even if it's owned by an entity, such as a bank. They have to give you permission to come to their property. Now, does it happen every day? Yes. So, um, if it's, the, the biggest thing that you want to know is, is it occupied? If you're flipping the property, this isn't a, a deal breaker, but it, it's a variable that you have to take into account. Um, it could be a homeowner or it could be a tenant that has no clue that it was just sold at auction. Um, I'll take the example of the owner first. The owner's been well aware. There's been notices upon notices on the front door. They haven't paid. They've been called. They know what's happening. And they probably know the date that the sale's going on. So they're just waiting for a check. Because the, the standard practice is uh, relocation assistance, also called cash for keys. And a number of investors do that. Basically, they're saying, we'll give you this sum of money if you keep the property nice and get all your stuff out. It saves the investor time and money of cleaning out the, the property. Now the owner can say, yeah, that's great. You sign an agreement. Make sure it's signed by both parties if you're brokering it for as an agent. Because if there's no signed agreement, the owner can sit in there as long as they want saying, oh, I was told I was given six months, a year, three years, whatever, whatever they make. And the judge is going, you know, if there's no signed agreement, He's always going to go with who's ever in possession of the house, and that's the person living there. That's the problem. So always get it signed, even that relocation assistance. Um, if they don't want to leave, then you're going to have to go through an eviction process. Uh, anybody gone through that? Gone through that process? It, it's a it's a simple process, but it can take a long time. Uh, you know, you basically yes, sir. On the average, what would you say it takes you to evict an uncooperative tenant? Um, an educated, un um, from the time you knock on the door and they say go away, I, I would say no longer than six months. You should be able to get them out within three months, but I'll give you that gray of three to six months. And that's only because of when do you get on the court docket to get in front of the judge. Because I, I'll send you, I'll send you a whole um, kind of a flow chart of. Uh, non-paying and a and a uncooperative. How's that? And there's a difference if it's a tenant or an owner. Yeah. Well, the reason why I ask is I've never actually had to do that. I've always been able to get them out within 30 days of cash. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Now, 
as, as Linda just said, there's a difference if there's a tenant. When you, when you go down there, tenants actually have more rights than the former owner. Um, they, uh, basically, it's 90 days. They, they, they got that locked in. If they don't want to move, they got 90 days. Um, if they don't have a lease? If they don't have a lease, then, then it's an eviction process. Then you can shorten it down to about 30 to 45 days. Okay? And the lease has to be a valid lease yeah. prior to a default filing. Because anybody can file a, a lease and, yeah. uh, you know, quick, and delay. Yeah, so quick, it's the bond file lease if it was recorded, or if the lease was prepared prior to the default. Yeah. Um, however, you know, there are leases that, you know, could go nine months. Now, tenants aren't bad variables. If you're flipping, the, or excuse me, if you're going to use this as a rental, you have a paying customer already in the house. You might not have to do any repairs. You might want to do repairs or at least do an inspection. Um, a friend of mine that I didn't bid against him because he was in a different price range than I was, but he would tell the tenant, I will put you in a hotel for three months. I will pay everything as long as we can sign the lease for a two-year lease. Well, then he'd go in, do all the repairs, do all the fixing up, He'd increase the rent a little bit because he, you know, basically made it a new house, and that person got three months of living in a hotel, sometimes a family of four. Uh, that was the investment the the uh, the LLC wanted to do, because then all of a sudden now they have a two-year lease agreement at the price they wanted. So, you know, it was a little front end to get the back end type thing. So, um, when you go out to the property, you know, get pictures, get as many pictures as you can, because. Properties get postponed, things change. If it's postponed 30 days, you could go back, there's no AC unit anymore. There's vandalism, there's tagging, there's broken windows. Uh, the beautiful kitchen is no longer there. Things like that. Um, or the house gets burnt down. Oh, we won't talk about that one. That's a fun story. We'll, we'll, that we'll that was the story that I was going to tell. Yeah, we'll we'll bring that up at the end. Fish bowl, my favorite. Yeah, um, Assess the neighborhood. I call it the Mrs. Kravitz rule. If you're old enough to know who Mrs. Kravitz is, then, then you'll get the joke. But talk to the neighbor. They'll know more about the property than anybody. They'll know if it's been refurnished. Oh, yeah, they just put in carpet six months ago. It's too bad they lost their house. Oh, that's good to know. You know? Oh, yeah, they had kind of a, you know, something going on. You know, there's a little little fire in the garage. That's good to know, too. You know? Or, you know, yeah, they've had septic problems forever. You know, they've never really addressed it, and it stinks. Thank you. I'll avoid this part. <coughs> Things like that. So um, the neighbors are, are great because they'll, they'll tell you the pros and cons, and they'll do it freely. And once you just identify saying, you know, I, I'm looking at buying this house. I'd like to get some good renters, you know, good tenants in there. Oh, we, we want good tenants, please. We want families. We don't want families. They're, they're going to be on one side of the fence or the other. So uh, just play it up and get the information you need. Uh, oh, I didn't address about going into the property. All right. The legal advice I have to say is don't go on the property. Do everything exterior. Now, are there times where I crawled through a doggy door to get inside? Yes. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. That window just might be open. I, I went to a property, and it was a great property. It was one of those, the opening bit was perfect. It was three bedroom, two bath, had a pool in the back, and it was perfect. It was exactly what my investor wanted. Everything was locked up tight. Blinds closed. I couldn't see anything. Sliding door, checked all the windows. Couldn't find a single way in. So I'm about ready to, you know, you know text the results of it saying, you know, it's sight unseen, you know, what we have is what we get. Car screeches up, guy jumps out of the car. The car's still running, you know, he threw it in, kicks in the front door, walks in, starts taking his pictures. He walks out, he goes, leaves, and I'm looking, yeah, the door's open. <laughs> Beautiful cabinets, all the appliances. I mean, it was like a $5,000 difference by waiting 30 seconds. Now, I wasn't going to kick in a door, but since it was already open, I took advantage. So, um, and then I'm down at the auction bidding against the guy who yeah, was right, right there. So, but uh, and I, I didn't get that property you, you by the way. Hire it. No, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, but by the law, you you can't you know drill out locks. You can't pop them, open a door. You can't break a window. These are all laws of the land that you're breaking. Um, but you know. Yeah, it is. So, 
Um, internet research. This is, this is where you can really minimize a lot of the work because a lot of the information is out there. So um, you can you know, check your MLS. You can do your neighborhood comps. You can do that. Um, a lot of these title companies um, have apps now. I just punch in the address, pull up the comps, put up you know, the listings of what is sold in the last 90 days. It's great. It's right on my phone. So I'm at the property. I can pull it up. I got all the information right there. Yep. Uh, for those in the room that are not familiar and have not learned it yet, uh, re, um, a realister, realist. uh, thank you, realist uh, is, is excellent and he gives you a lot of that information and then some. So you just you have to learn to use it and it's not that difficult. Is it free? Yes, it is. Okay. It's R E L I S T, right? I'm sorry. R E hyphen. If you go into Fusion and you pull down your tax star, your your field where the tax star is, it's at the very bottom. Okay. All right. Um, if you don't have MLS access, I'm not an agent. Get to know one very, very good, you know, very quickly, because they can save you a lot of work. If you just say, hey, can you pull this up real quick and shoot it back to me? You know, buy them dinner every once in a while. You know, that's how I did it. Um, former listings, that's the big thing, too. You know, there's, you know, properties that have been listed through a short sale possibility or has been sold two years previously. You can get the interior pictures and get a feel of what the property might look at if you can't see in it. Um, Google, of course, you know, they're everywhere. They have street views, right, right built in. Um, County Accessor, you can also get some information directly off there. Now this is all, most of this is public record. Obviously the MLS, you have to know someone or, or be a, an agent. All right, property analysis. The, what were the two numbers that you absolutely needed? Quick, quick. Something. Opening bid's the first one, because you need a starting point. And liens, because that's going to kill your deal. Now, there's a lot of variables that are also involved, but those are the two numbers you need to start with. So, you're, you're going to start with the opening bid, and you're going to kind of work backwards. What is it going to cost me with this investment? Okay? Because um, there's a lot of things that are involved, and if you don't account for them, they're going to bite into your, your uh, rate of return. So, Make sure that you do the work ahead of time because if you go there and all of a sudden you got a septic problem and there's a five thousand dollar bill waiting for you, you know if your your margin was six thousand dollars, all of a sudden this is not a great deal. Can you lose money? Absolutely, you can lose money on these deals. So the best thing is be prepared. You know the old scout adage, um, resale value, and that's going to that's going to fluctuate very quickly in this market. You know Vegas does. Pretty volatile. You now, right now we're here, and I'm not I'm not allowed to say the mini bubble, you know, because who knows where we're at. But you know, it can go this way very quickly, and then it can bounce back. So um, make sure you check your resale value, um, order a title research. Lend is great, you know, phone call, phone. There it is, um, and it's actually built in on on the Rapid site. And any refurbs, you know, you're going to have to put in those, those costs. You're going to have to at least do the carpet. You're going to have to do paint. You're going to have to do a trash out. You might have to do a cash for keys. You might have to go through an eviction. So put all these numbers in advance. Then if you don't have to use any of these, this is all profit at the end. So, all right. Really quick on that, I don't know if Chris going to talk about it, but in that Rapid Trustee sales site, they do have what they call a deal analysis. Is that what, is that what yeah. you're looking at? Yeah, this is a quick example, but I'll, I'll show you a live, live version of it on our site. But, um, you know, you just plug in the arbitrary numbers because you know, you're guessing at this point because a lot of things can change. But there's a deal analysis. You put in all the numbers, you click a button, it'll calculate and tell you what your profit is. So. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, I mentioned all these trustee sites. If you want to do it the hard way or the long way, you can go to the sites directly and, and get the information. Trustee Corps, National Default, LPS Quality, and Recon Trust. These are the big six that I call. This will do about 98% of all the properties that show up down at the Nevada Legal News. Why I say 98%? Because there's some small attorneys and credit unions and Sometimes even title companies have properties that they'll 
they'll show up at the auction. Uh, software, you'll get all the websites here. And I call these the four P's of mine. Uh, the first one is planning. Make sure you do your due diligence. You know, do your field research, do your title research, do your comps, do all that. Uh, preparation, use the technology. Your time is too valuable. So if you can take 10 hours of work and stretch it down to one hour of work, use all that technology. Patience, 80 to 90% of these properties are going to postpone, be postponed at least once. So you're going to be there, you're going to... I can tell you, I was 0 for 17 before I got my first property. If I was bidding on 17 properties and losing, you get very discouraged. When you get that first one, it's an adrenaline rush. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and it wasn't even my money. That, that's what the crazy thing is. And then the payment. Obviously, don't forget to bring your checks. Um, I went down there. I had five properties on the list. Uh, it ended up being narrowed down to two. The property came up. And I went, I didn't have my checks. Now this is for an investment group, okay? You know, I'm thinking back, I set it on the desk, there's about $500,000 in checks. How am I going to explain this to the investment group? So I called my boss, he called them, we're on a three-way, what can we do? They were very understanding and they said, well, maybe it'll get postponed and I'm praying on my knees. Please postpone this. It came and went and it went for higher than what our target was. So I was like, thank you, Satan, Jesus. All right, so I got to go back to work the next day. So I always check for the, you know, make sure you have your, your checks with you. So. All right, I'm going to jump on real quick. And this is, now you get the little big sales pitch from Raptor. Like I said, there's a lot of, there's a, lot of trustee software site, even focused right here in Clark County, Las Vegas default, 702 buy, info closure, uh, property radar. These are all sites, some uh, Nevada legal news. Some have subscriptions, some have higher subscriptions or fees built in, much higher. Rapid is free. This is our product and I want everybody to be using it. A lot of times down there, what I found what the fraternity doesn't want, do not want people to know about the auction because they want to keep this small fraternity so they can buy all the properties and get all the good deals. Well, let's say I, I was an outsider. I didn't get to sit in the front row. I sat in the back. I tried to keep my mouth shut. 